Hey everyone, thanks for joining me once again. So uh, today's video is going to be a follow-up to clinical trials. In some previous videos, I had mentioned that I had discovered some clinical trials and I would bring that um, information to you and that's what this video is going to be about. So let's get started. So uh, first off, um, there are two triple negative clinical trials that I had discovered um, below here to hit the drop down um, are the NCT numbers associated with those clinical trials. You could take those numbers and put them in Google and all kinds of links will come up with uh, specifics on everything you need to know from drugs, who to contact, etc. So I encourage you if you have triple negative breast cancer or know somebody that does to see if you qualify for the clinical trial. Now I can tell you one of the clinical trials you do have to be BRCA positive. That means you've tested positive for the gene. That's one of the trials. Um, and I'll tell you more about the second trial. The second trial is a trial that I really wanted to get into. So basically, I contacted a research coordinator in Nebraska who got me in contact with a research coordinator in the state that I live in and actually in the city that I live in. Um, these research trials are national trials. They're being conducted in almost every state um, in the United States in quite a few different cities. So all you need to do is call the number and get more information. Uh, as far as I know, um, those clinical trials are actually still open and ongoing. So um, anyway, I was given the name of a local oncologist who um, is part of the, the clinical trial and regularly treats triple negative breast cancer. In fact, he treats more triple neg negative breast cancer than most people in the region. So um, he's been in breast cancer for over 30 years. He is a well-seasoned gentleman in terms of being in the cancer world. Um, so, you know, all that was good. Um, of course, I wanted to use a high level of discernment when moving forward, God-given discernment, because um, I've already worked with two oncologists, one here in the city I work with, and you know I've got a second opinion with the CTCA, so I'm actually scheduled to start chemo with them in the next couple of weeks. Um, of course, like I said, I stumbled upon the clinical trial and want to go that route. I leave no stone uncovered, neither should you when it comes to your health, and so um, that's basically what I did. So uh, this new oncologist's office contacted me this past Monday. So basically last week stated they had an appointment available for me, which would be on a Saturday. And I was like, wow, a Saturday appointment at 11 a.m. with the 1045 check-in. They also, so they sent me the HIPAA forms and some pre-forms to fill out. I did all that. They also sent me their FMLA policy, which basically if you have FMLA or any other documentation, they outsource it to a third party and that third party charges $30 per form. So that was kind of the first red flag. That kind of threw me off when I read that. Um, but I didn't let it hinder me from moving forward. So I go to the uh, appointment on Saturday. I get there at 1045, fill out more forms. And basically, I didn't see the doctor until almost 1215. So an hour and a half later, I finally got to see the doctor. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, in the 21st century, if I have to wait more than 20 minutes to see an, an actual doctor, um, I'm walking out the door. I'm gathering my stuff and I'm out the door. You don't have to wait that long in this modern decade. You don't. That was so 90s. 90s and HMOs and all that other stuff that we had to deal with. Nobody waits that long to see a doctor. You just don't have to do that. And so that also left a very bad taste in my mouth. But I'd gone there. I had patience. I waited. I had a whole list of questions I needed answered. The doctor was very, very nice. The office was nice and clean. It's attached to a very large medical institution uh, or hospital rather that is less than five minutes from my house. Um, and so the doctor came in, apologized for the long wait. He did have other patients. He takes time with his patients. That's why he had to wait. Um, and basically, uh, the long and the short of it is I didn't even qualify for the last triple negative clinical trial. And so basically, um, if I had still had the tumors in my body, then I probably would have. So part of this clinical trial is that they want to map the DNA of the tumor. So basically, you're diagnosed with breast cancer. Your next step would be to get into the clinical trial and they would biopsy all of the tumors 
and basically do DNA mapping and then from there treat with um, a list of chemo drugs. Now, three of the four drugs are drugs I'm only already going to be treated with. I'm already aware of, but there's a fourth drug um, called carboplatin or, or cisplatin that um, is a well-known uh, breast cancer drug because I've heard of it before. I just never heard of it being used with triple negative patients. So I got more information about that. Um, also keep in mind, um, clinical trials, if you can get into a clinical trial, um, more than likely you don't have to pay for it, nor do you even need insurance. This particular clinical trial I was trying to get into cost about $100,000 and would be paid for by a research grant provided by the hospital that this oncologist's office was attached to. So um, never be afraid of clinical trials if you can get into it. A lot of times they are paid for uh, by grants. So I did ask that question and that is the answer that I received. Um, again, uh, it's a four drug cocktail. Um, again, I left the information below, just hit the drop down. Just because I don't qualify for it doesn't mean that you won't or somebody you know might um, qualify for it. So I definitely want to share that information and get it out there. Um, but again, I went, I got information. I realized it wasn't for me. I don't qualify for the clinical trial. Uh, there's some other things that I realized, um, because I could go to this oncologist for treatment, right? He does triple negative just because I'm not in the trial. He can still treat me. And we talked about that, but I realized that's not the right path for me that I need to stay the course, which was basically to go uh, to the CTCA for my next step treatment, which is now going to be chemotherapy. Um, also, uh, I have an upcoming CT scan, and I'll, I will share that with you and report back to you on that. So I just wanted to bring this video to you and update you on clinical trials, what I found out, how it pertains to me, and hopefully it might help you or somebody you know. So I'm going to list that information. Just Google it or go to the National uh, Institute of Health or National Health Institute you can also go to clinicaltrials.org. Um, I also wrote down uh, clinicalcenter.nih.gov or just take the NCT number I put down there and paste it into Google. All kinds of information will come up. Study with a fine tooth comb. Get involved if it's the right fit for you. And um, there it is. That's the information that I wanted to relay. And um, stay tuned for more videos, more information as we continue this journey.